Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to take this seven pound hunk of aluminum and cut it down to just under two pounds to make a part for my 30 pound combat robot. Let's see how it goes. Here is the weapon assembly for my combat robot. Down here you have the weapon, of course, which spins around and attached to that is this uh, weapon hub, which I made in a previous video, and then the pulleys, which I made in another video. Up top, we've got the two motors that spin the pulleys and then spin the weapon itself, and then the drive block. The drive block is what I'll be making in this video. If we make it transparent, you can see the hub down here at the bottom, and then these two tapered roller bearings that get pressed into the weapon block. If we look at the part by itself, you can see that it's relatively complicated with a lot of various features. So for that reason, I'm not going to run through the cam, you know, each operation one by one because it'd just be way too long of a video. So I'll just kind of give you a quick overview. Um, if we go over to the cam tab, you can see that I have my stock defined. The part itself is eight and a half by four inches. And here's a representation of the stock that I am starting with. So if we look over at the first job or the first set of operations here and do a simulation, you can see that I'm starting with the bottom side and cutting out basically the pulley and the belt um, hole here, this um, middle section where all the bearings go, and then these two just kind of weight savings portions over here. And then if we do the second job, you can see them doing all the operations on the top. So pretty simple, basically the bottom, flip it over and then do the top. I've got a lot of adaptive clearing on here and then a lot of contours later just to clean up some of the things that the adaptive didn't get, like you know cleaning up this edge, cleaning up the um, inside of here, things like that. So it's pretty basic cam. I'm really only using two different mills. I'm using the shear hog and then the quarter inch end mill to go and clean it up. And if you look over here, I have a coordinate system that is actually centered on this central hole. And I'll talk a little bit about this later, but the first operation um, relies on basically the center of mass and then the other operations rely on this coordinate system. So the first thing I need to do is cut this down to length and since this is eight and a half inches long it's a little too long for my mill. Although the mill travel is 10 inches it's also really tall so I don't have an end mill that's just gonna take off these ends so I have a different way of doing that. I've got the block of aluminum set up in the mill and you can see I have the vise set up vertically. This is the four inch vise that um, is packaged with the 440. I have it just clamped down to the table with some toe clamps over here and you can see I have a small gap underneath and that's because I'm not sure if that face is parallel to this face so I need to raise it up a little bit and I can check and I can see that this side is pretty perpendicular. There's no real gap there, so that's going to be fine. So I just need to make sure that this face is perpendicular with that. And then I have my fly cutter set up here. I'm going to fly cut this face, flip it around. I know that's going to be perpendicular, and then I'm going to cut the other face and effectively cut this down to the eight and a half inch length that I need. Now that I've got the ends machined down to size, I need to set up the vise so that I can actually start machining the part. So I set up the vise in the you know, standard configuration, and I made sure to mark the center of this block since the um, Y travel and the X travel was relatively close to the limits of my machine. I wanted to make sure that the vise was relatively well centered so that I could access you know, all corners of the block. As I said earlier, I'm starting with the bottom operations first. So I'm using the good old trusty passive probe to find the center of this since that is the reference point that I chose in CAM. From here, it was just a lot of material removal. Thankfully, the shear hog is really good at this. I was actually pushing it pretty hard. I was running about 6,000 RPM. I was going about 25 inches per minute 
um, pretty much the full depth of the shear hog, which is about a quarter inch. And I was doing a quarter inch step over. So I mean, it was really, really hogging out some material. the part now that the bottom operations are done. I've got these two channels machined out, the pulley clearance channel, and then the um, pocket for the bearings. And I made this bearing pocket a little bit bigger than I normally would have because this is going to be for prototyping, so I kind of wanted it easy to get the bearing in and out of, but it's still a pretty good fit. It just kind of slides right in there. And then this is the pulley I machined from another video. And you can see that one just kind of slides right in there. And there we go. So this is all looking pretty darn good. So now what I need to do is flip this over and machine all the features on the other side. Now you can see that I went all the way through with this hole. This needs to be pretty darn concentric because there's going to be another set of tapered roller bearings on this side pressing down on the um, weapon hub. So I need to make sure that this is concentric with the pocket on the underneath side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the vise face this off and then indicate off of this hole and this will effectively be my zero point and this is what I have in cam as my zero point because I'm not really concerned about these edges anymore. I also skipped doing all the features for the motor. The motors actually go here and here on the top side like that. I actually didn't do any of the holes or any of the uh, mounting for those yet because I'm going to do those all through the top because I want to line them up with the pocket. So I want to make sure all of that is perfectly lined up on this plane. So yeah, I'm going to mount this into the vise and then just start making some chips. When I flip the part over to do all the operations on the other side, I use the passive probe to find the middle of that hole and that was going to be my reference. I also used my dial test indicator mounted into the spindle just to kind of verify that the passive probe was actually finding the center. And I kind of went back and forth a couple times just to verify this because if these were out of alignment, the whole part would be ruined. After being reasonably confident that everything was lined up, I just went ahead and started machining. For once, um, I really didn't have any issues with this. Um, everything went just fine. The shear hog kept plugging away, just removing all the chips, and. There was a total of like 24 operations on this, which for me is quite a bit. And yeah, everything went really smoothly. You know, the coolant was a bit of an issue as it always is, getting the chips out of the way. But other than that, everything actually worked out just fine.
here is the finished part. It actually turned out really nice. I didn't have any uh, major issues in it. I did do a couple final things off camera. I did a little, um, you know, a couple chamfers down here, opened up some holes. Um, I added some screw holes to the ends there and there and tapped those. This was a little bit too tall to fit on the Tormach, so I ended up just kind of um, lining everything up and doing those by hand on the drill press, and that turned out all right. So yeah, overall, everything looks nice. The um, motors sit in here just fine. The um, bearings sit in there just fine, so I think this is going to work out. So next step is to just kind of um, start assembling everything. So I uh, look forward to those videos in the future. If you want to check out more updates for my channel, you can check out my Facebook page, or you can check out my Patreon page to either support this channel or see some of the other channels that I support. Thanks for watching.